Hi guys, okay, we've been talking about the power of the Moji Pro version 1.6 to quickly build up your page rank. So let's talk about how easy it is to install and to use. And let's start with this. When you first get it, there are two zip files involved. One is for the software, the other is for the placeholder website. First thing we need to do is install the software. And if you already have an earlier version, you do not need to uninstall it. It'll get overwritten. So let's just take this first one and WinZip extract to here. And that's the Moji Pro zip file that you see. And so when we open it, okay, it showed up over there. All right, when we open it, this is it. We just hit the Moji Professional Installer, hit next. Now we gotta enter a real email address because that's how you guys get updates on new versions of the software and the product key for this computer the one I've been using already see so always use the same email and the same password on the same computer for all your updates because it's reading it from your system registry and so always use the same two items okay for any one computer for all your updates all right so when this gets done just a couple of seconds still then you see the finish button, go ahead and hit it. And you're done. When you open the Moji Pro now, it will say version 1.6. That's how you know it installed. All right, I don't need to save the profile because I didn't do anything. All right, there's a readme here. It's important to read it. There's some notes at the top about using pipes for CSV pipe delimited. And so make sure you go through that. Uh, the majority of this though, just lays out the updates, changes with version 1.6, big ones. And below that was changes with version 1.5. We just kept adding to it as we went. So this is here for reference. You can go over it anytime you want, if you like. Uh, at the bottom, there are some examples of matching the domain names with the FTP root folder path, all that basic stuff that if you don't perfectly know and you feel like you need to brush it up, it's there. So there you have it. Anyway, we're done with that. So now what we can uh, do actually is go ahead and delete this thing. Just make sure to read that readme file like I've been saying. All right, now the next thing is a placeholder website. Let's go ahead and extract that to here as well. And that gives us a folder called moji-demo. Now what I'm gonna do is stick it in my C drive because that's what you need to do. It needs to go there so it can be read properly. All the paths have to match. So I just drag it in, okay? Just make sure it shows up in here. Now, uh, I won't do it because I already have one in there. And if you already had the earlier version of the stuff in there, then just go ahead and drag it in and go ahead and let it merge. That's fine because they have different subfolders now. This has a V1 folder. You never have one of those. So that's what you're really doing is just getting that V1 folder into uh, the Moji demo folder. There it is. All right. And so it'll show up in here. Uh, you, you probably won't see this unless you've had some of our earlier stuff. So don't worry about it. You should just see that V1. Inside the V1 is all the stuff. Okay. And what you're really going to do is going to wind up being a one, two, three step procedure. And that's it. That's literally it. There is a readme first and it's got a handful of notes. It's not that bad. This is about it. And it just goes over some of the feedback and stuff that we got from different guys. So just common sense notes mainly so you understand what's going on. All right. So there's that. Okay. Now, since you have this installed in your C drive, you might want a shortcut on the desktop. So just right click on the V1 and put send to desktop. That way we have a shortcut where you can reach it right away. And if you want, you can rename it you know, just a V1, something like that. You don't need the shortcut in there. If that's, you know, your preference. But because of the big arrow here, you know it's a shortcut. And there you go. Points right where it's supposed to. That way you can deal with everything easily. All right, so now that I did that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this thing. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this thing. Okay, now what I want to do is just go ahead and show you the simplest kind of run. Uh, that's going to be, you're going to create a project on our website and you're going to upload your project there with a thousand pages. All right. And it's going to be for some project and we may as well do one project actually. And so I had this come in and somebody was asking to swap out four affiliate links, just swap them out. Okay. These show up in Google. I checked. And so they are real pages that really get indexed in Google. And so that works. All right. And then they weren't really sure what they wanted to use for keywords. So they gave me a bunch of things that are going to be next to impossible to beat. 
<laughs> most of these because if you try to go for something like tickets I mean the guys on the front page are page rank 6 page rank 7 even page rank 8 sometimes websites uh, you're gonna find it extremely hard to beat those websites because their page rank is just too high and they can covet those keywords a lot better because they've really been at it for a long time that's how it works you know everybody wants to be on the front page for health and beauty who gets to win it? The guys who are the most popular, the ones with the highest page rank. Okay, so going after single word keywords like this and occasional double word keywords that are just going to turn out to be really high, um, that's not low hanging fruit. And there's no point in going after these keywords first. Build your page rank with things that at least draw visitors to you. Okay, so let me see. Yeah, I went to Google and I found out that that particular link does exist and that's why it counts. If I tried to do a search for this and all I saw was ZekeRewards.com and that was it, then it wouldn't be a real web page and it wouldn't count because it wouldn't be getting indexed. And so there would be no good in promoting that. I would just be promoting Zeke Rewards. That goes for all you guys with affiliate links that you're unsure of check your links and make sure that they actually show up in the results for real if you cannot see your exact link in the results if all you see is the parent company then you need to get a different domain and and create a page on there that forwards in something like that copy the page if you have to especially if they allow it usually they will uh, as long as you're promoting their stuff just make sure that you're promoting a page that physically shows up in Google Okay, and so here's another one, and they show up too. A couple of them don't, and because they don't, I wasn't sure why, but I figured probably they're new accounts, and because of that, I went ahead and did a site command, site colon, on their entire website to see all the pages on their website. Almost all of them are all these different guys. Okay, this website really doesn't have hardly any pages on it, and the rest of these are basically dupes which would explain why this website has like a, uh, let me see, the website itself, it says NA up here, but I have a backup tool that I checked just in case, it's the WR plugin, uh, WebRank plugin for Firefox, and this says there's a one out of 10 page rank score. Now on one of these uh, affiliate links, it's zero out of 10, so that's cool. It's actually ranking differently, which means we actually get to see the page rank of our pages rise above the page rank of the main program if they stay at a page rank one. Now, it, now there might be some bleed of the page rank to their home page because there are some links in here that actually point directly at their home somewhere in there. Um, maybe and maybe not. Well, there will be some bleed anyway, but this will be the page that gets all the power. This and the other ones that we're going to push. Why did these other two probably not show up? Because they're probably brand new accounts, like I was saying, and so they'll show up later anyway, so it's okay to promote them. Since this site is promoting like 112,000 and Google's indexed that many for all these different front ends, then I can rest assured that these two sites will also show up pretty soon, especially if we start pointing, pay, uh, pointing backlinks at them anyway. So I'm cool with the idea that's what I had to find out. I'm cool with the idea that these can be backlinked. Okay, they don't need the slashes. Okay, and I'm just cool with the idea that they can, in fact, be backlinked. I can use this in a backlink, and I'm actually doing that page justice, not just the main page, but the whole page because it does show up in Google. And coolly, it shows its own page rank score, which is going to be neat. We get to watch the page rank of these particular links carry more weight than the rest of the website most likely. I looked at uh, uh, the page rank of some of the top guys that showed up in that 112,000 page list and those guys have page rank zeros too. So like no one's doing anything with the site so these guys are really in a pretty good shape to, to wind up being the winning ones, the best pages to show up for a lot of things. But not these, you know, Penny Auction. I looked. Just about every website that shows up on the front page for Penny Auction, and this is the kind of way you do keyword research anyway. You know, if you just take a look. Um, hello. Paste. Thank you. Uh, if I get to paste that in. Yeah, Penny Auction. Okay. If you just go there and pass the edge, you just start right-clicking opening in a new link. Okay. 
What do you see? Uh, page rank of three, not bad. Four, tough. That's going to be tough. That's like ten page rank threes, you know. Uh, one, not bad at all. They're kind of across the board. Might be able to squeeze in there with some real work. But they're not optimizing their web page for it, so I looked at one other thing. I went to the Google search uh, keyword tool. This is something that we teach all the guys how to do anyway. It's just google.com slash sktool, S-K-T-O-O-L, for search keyword tool, and hit that for the forwarding link. And if you sign in, then you don't see this bit down here. I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. That's just having a free Google account. Now, I instead of putting in keywords, I put in the website. All the pages are the same. So I just wanted to know, what did Google think? All right, and Google says, all right, if you get enough page rank, then that page is suited to show up for these high-hitting keywords. They may be low, medium, or high competition, but they have a lot of searches per month. Okay, and that's the broad. Let's go with the exact to get realistic numbers. All right, but it's good to know these. This is still don't scoff at any of these. These are except for that one. Less than ten uh, searches a month. Company compensation plans. There's fewer than ten people a month putting exactly that into Google. So we don't need to worry about that one, and we won't. But there's uh, keywords here that are just no good for us. Google Talk sign in. Yahoo Messenger sign up sign up for Google account. We can't use these. We could use other ones though. Unilever compensation plan. We could use business app with one P. We could use compensation plans uh, and so on. Obviously there are more searches for phrases like Google account sign up than there would be for compensation plans. However, Again, don't scoff. We want to build from the ground up and we may as well work with what the web page gives us if we're trying to get from a page rank zero up to a page rank one, two, three. Let's start somewhere at a place that draws us traffic. Again, if we get up there for compensation plans, 480 people see us. If we also wind up for binary compensation plan, 210 more people a month see us. If we get up there for best business opportunity, another 480 people a month see us. You add this stuff up and it starts to really add up. And this is why it's incredibly valuable to do, especially if you're going for the right words. So what I did was I took that list down, down here, and I and these are just notes. So I went explaining all this stuff. Um, I pretty much just talked to you all the way through it. So at the bottom down here, I put the words that I want to go for. There's one, two, three, four, five, actually. And then I have this note about the business app saying that this does have a high average PR on the front page, but pay attention to the exact pages being linked. Page rank scores that you see are for the front page of the website, but what I found for business op was a lot of sub pages show up and they seem kind of just wherever, helder skelter all through the website. I don't think that there's really a lot of competition for that thing. All right, so there we go. That's something that we can go after too. That, that gives us our list of five keywords that we ought to start with, and we're going to use these five keywords to drive four different websites. Okay, so we're trying to get all four of these things to get rank on these five terms right here. So we have our terms, our keywords to add, and we have our websites to add, and that's what we need to run the Moji Pro. And like I said, let's just start with the website that we have right now. I just leave that alone, go here. And it's a three-step process. Physically, how does this work? Start with the one dash placeholder website. This other one is a variation. I'll come back to it later to explain what we did. I took and made a copy of it and pasted it, renamed it, and now I can change this one to be different. Why? So I don't just put pages on one website. I want to put them on another. I have the FTP access to both. Let's start with one placeholder website. And when I open it, it just opens the main window. I still have to hit load and then load it again. Make sure you're in the right place. Okay, just browse to the right place and open it. 